It's Wednesday afternoon at the symposium in Long Beach, California. This is Steve Koster with Expresso Engineering, and we're still wandering around the showroom floor, and we just happened to stop in at Pearson Electronics. Here's Chris Waters and uh, Jeff Reed. How you guys doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Great. Thanks for letting us stop by. Yeah. Our pleasure, Steve. Thanks for coming. Hey, Jeff, what can you tell me about uh, Pearson Electronics? What kind of products do you have? Sure. Pearson Electronics has been in business since 1955. Uh, we're a manufacturer of precision wideband current probes uh, used for uh, AC current measurements. And uh, here's a couple samplings of our probes here. This is one of our uh, clamp-on models, an open configuration like this for easy operation. Um, originally, the uh, probes were designed to measure uh, pulse currents and uh, can be used, though, for uh, measurements, uh, accurate and precise measurements of any AC current. Uh, and in particular for this show would be lightning uh, analysis, surge currents, uh, transients, uh, EMI measurements, and, uh, of course, pulse, harmonics, and, and other type of AC waveforms. That's awesome. Now, I notice a lot of different probes and a lot of different diameters and things. And, of course, I've got a little bit of experience and understand that. But what can you tell people about that, the different models and things like that? Sure. So uh, different models, different apertures for the conductor size, depending upon what you need. Uh, different sensitivities as far as transfer impedance to measure uh, small currents or really large currents, up to a 500 kiloamps pulse uh, on some of our larger models. That's very, very good. And you have a, quite the selection of both uh, clip, clap on and um, the solid models. Exactly. And we have uh, someone with us here who's got uh, two demonstrations we'd like to show. Ken Javor, who's been working with us, if we could step over here. And uh, Ken is demonstrating this uh, here for us, the CS101. Uh, Ken, Ken? If you, Ken, if you'd be Ken Javor? Please. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Ken. This is. Uh, you want to okay. hold that? Uh, oh. Nobody holds my no. Okay. <laughs> Ken's going to show us. Uh, what do you got to show us today, Ken? Well, uh, we got a couple applications of the wideband nature of Pearson uh, current probes, and one of them is uh, C Mill Standard 461 CS115, which is a time domain uh, transient. It's 30 nanoseconds wide with two nanosecond rise and fall time. So that's a 15 to one ratio between the. Uh, duration and the uh, rise and fall times and that's a perfect application of uh, Pearson wideband technology. So what you see here is we've got a, a solar electronics CS115 sp um, spike generator which is kind of an industry standard and we're going using the uh, the Pearson injection clamp in the cal fixture here and if you come around if you can see this you see a really nice square waveform which is actually much better than the mill standard uh, requires because when the mill standard was written back in the early 90s, there were no devices that had the low frequency performance uh, that would allow this to run without droop. So there's no droop here because of the uh, wideband characteristics. This is kind of the high frequency ends of things. The, the bandwidth required for CS115 runs out to 160 megahertz. Um, so we're, we're running from about 10 megahertz to 160 megahertz required bandwidth to get this. So um, we're now going to go to the other end of things, the low frequency end, and we're going to show the wideband characteristics of uh, Pearson current probes down at audio and sub-audio frequencies. Well, that's pretty good because I know that when we do CS115, we do get a lot of that droop for going towards the end of the pulse when we're trying Absolutely. to uh, verify it. And when you get rid of it, it makes it a whole lot easier to characterize the pulse. Okay, You're, you're not trying to find a peak and all that. The, the peak is the flat top. Absolutely. Very good. And then you, over here you have something in the low frequency. That's correct. What we've got here is um, there's a mill standard requirement CE101, uh, and that's uh, 30 hertz to about 10 kilohertz. And there's a whole variety of probes that have been used over the years. This is an old requirement going back to 1967. And I just got a whole variety of them that you'll find in any EMI test facility. But on either ends, I've got it bookended by the Pearson probes. And both of these have extremely wide band performance. And let me show you here. Um, this here would be a typical CE 101 current probe transfer impedance, the 91197. It's been around forever, okay, and it works for most applications. But you can see here down here at 30 hertz, it's rolled off quite a bit. It's 40, 40 some dB down from its flat zone. The Pearson probe, by, by comparison, the 3525, is flat 
from 10 megahertz all the way down to 10 hertz. And in fact, on the screen here, we ran a test and they pushed it all the way down to five hertz and it was still pretty flat. The yellow curve here is amplitude, the blue curve is phase, okay? So what this means is, is that if you have a requirement for a really low level uh, measurement or a really low frequency measurement, these probes will do a much better job for you and give you the ability to make measurements that you simply can't make otherwise. They're particularly good for common mode measurements. Uh, some specs require uh, common mode requirements, common mode limits down to 30 hertz or below at levels 50 dB below the normal mill standard level. And, and at that point, you need these, these uh, probes. Also, for instance, the 3525 here, they sell a lot of these to lightning test system manufacturers. Again, because that 10 hertz to 10 megahertz flat bandwidth gives you excellent reproduction of the lightning waveforms. So you can buy this thing and maybe you've got it for lightning, but keep in mind that you can also use it for low frequency measurements down to audio frequencies and below. And uh, that's about it, but that covers the both ends, you know, the, the, the extremely wide band at the low end and also at the high end. Terrific, Ken. Thank you for that insight, man. It uh, sometimes is a little difficult when you're working with clamps that aren't quite what you need. Right. <laughs>